Hello, wonderful people, viewers, and subscribers all over the world. This is a fact. What you're about to see and what you'll be hearing from this platform is an indices to show and to prove beyond every reasonable doubt to a large extent Nigeria will never survive Buhari government. Nigeria survivor beyond the government of Buhari with the way things are going is 10 to 90 chances. 90 chances Nigeria will never survive and 10% chance Nigeria to survive beyond Buhari government. Now, before I go into what you're about to see and hear from this platform as usual, undiluted truth, I want to use this opportunity to uh, inform some misguided elements. I know, yes, I know very well that it's not everybody that will understand the weight of, the, of, of our message, the content of the information we are releasing on this platform. I know that some people have allowed envy and allowed some kind of um, malice in them to come and confuse other people on this platform. Trying to label this platform one Nigerianist. I am not apologetic to anyone. It is your personal opinion. But I want to tell you, and I will keep saying it, that every trace of colonial structure, every remnant of colonization in Africa, beginning with Nigeria, which is a direct product of colonization, must be dismantled if there is hope for African nations to survive. Now, why am I saying that Bugari government will be the end of Nigeria? Nigeria will not survive beyond this government. This is the reason, beginning from the north. ...has repeated the same mistakes that the government has been making. They go after the messenger instead of dealing with the message. The message is very clear. Buhari has, through his ways, forced several separatist movements in the country. Buhari's employment of nepotism as policy is the reason why you now have all sections of the country saying they are no more interested in this issue. The most problematic one is security. Two weeks ago, I went to somewhere in Katsina. Specifically, I went to Damusa. I went to Sapana. I went to Basari. I went to Dusuma. I also went to Kankara. In all these places, Fulani bandits are killing houses in multitudes and government is not there. This problem also replicates itself in several parts of our country and the government has not allowed a prosecution of all those people that have been killing Nigerians all over. Today as we're talking, Buhari is still trying to seize ancestral lands so that he can find lands by force to resettle Fulani refugees escaping from Mali. Instead of him and the other West African leaders to come together and try to implement the 2015 peace agreement, no, all he's been doing is using one scheme after the other to try to seize ancestral land. He said Grezi Rizab, we said no. He said the Cal Colony, we said no. He said that he wants land for uh, uh, Ruga, we said no. Now again, he is talking about Consolidation of all the streams and waters, and everywhere we have waterways, plus six kilometers of land therefrom, so that he can have land and water to be able to use to resettle refugees. This is not the right way to rule this country. Everywhere there is tension. Yes, sir, Mr. Nanuju. have divided this country. So and how that's why we are happy yeah. that Prince of Asajjo is speaking up. Now, you had this man. He made it explicitly clear. He said it without missing word. That Nigeria has witnessed the worst kind of government, the worst kind of insecurity that has 
caused springs of agitation to separate from this unholy marriage. Because with the way, with the policy, with the body language, with the actions and inactions of this government led, led by Bugari, shows clearly that when we say fulanization, it is a task that this government has taken upon themselves to accomplish. And they are doing it in such a way that it seems clearly that time is running out of their hands. So they have little or no time to perfect that plan. And that is exactly what this man has said. Now, they started by turning the northern region into a war zone. Yes, they turned the northern region into a war zone, into a killing field. Before we always call them House of Fulani, today, the houses are rising or they are speaking up. They are saying they are not part of this. This is complete Fulanization. It has nothing to do with the Hausa people. In fact, Hausa people have become the biggest victims of this, of this conquest, of this conquest, policy, actions, and um, everything about this government. You heard him say it. They want to settle Fulanis across Africa in your God ancestral land. You heard him talk about Ruga. You heard him talk about grazing uh, 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 reserves for, for, for their hex top. You heard him talk about cattle colony. All in the bid to grab your land. Now, they are talking about waterways and also to give them six kilometers to every water. Now, these guys, they are doing it. My, my problem is that your governors are not even interested. They are still looking up to 2023 madness. I call it madness because that 2023 will never come. With the way things are going, 2023 will be a mirage. If by miraculous means or whatsoever means, we witness Nigeria 2023. I tell you, you political class from the Igbo land, mm -hmm. your biggest shock is in the waiting. Because these men, if they didn't complete their fulanization agenda till 2023, kiss goodbye to that your illusion you called Igbo presidency of 2023. And that is the truth. Now, they are now coming down because they have finalized, they have conquered the north. They have decimated the north. Now, they want by any means to turn our homeland into another killing field. They are pushing us. They are trying to provoke us. They are trying to push our people to take up arms so that here will be turned into a war zone. But I want to say this before I proceed. That's this is the time we must apply the greatest wisdom on earth. This is no time for us to be emotional at all. This is no time for us to start infighting. This is no time for us to start bickering among each other and trying to outdo each other. This is time for us to bridle our mouth. We don't just start speaking up anyhow. You come on the social media, you start threatening brimstone that you're going to finish this one, that if you see any police officer or army officer, kill them, do this, do that. It will only end there. But to them, that is the beginning of, and that is the doorway, that is the signal they need to start unleashing terror in our homeland. Now look at this report. I saw it today. I say, oh, say it go. They are, they, that is it. That is exactly, they are beginning to introduce. Remember, the chief of army staff, Brutaya, have once threatened to declare Southeast state of emergency. Now, they are beginning to play the card and this is one of it. This is one of it. Our people, please stop giving them that, 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 that leeway. Stop opening up this door for them. Stop saying what, even if you can do it. Boko Haram, they know they use social media. They know they use radio. They know they announce anything. One, the, the only announcement they do is when the bomb is landing on your roof and on your head. When the massacre is happening, then you'll be the one to be carrying the news. We should breathe all our mouth and stop talking like cowards. This is time for us to take action. This is time for us to come home, go inside, and start preparing. Nah. There is fire on the mountain. And I think I have spoken enough. It is left for you to take this message out to anyone concerned, especially the Biafran agitators and enthusiasts. 
who were opening up their mouth on social media and talking, 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 trying to open up this door for these people to, to, to come in. I know my people. My people are very peaceful people. They don't want to confront Nigeria with wars of arms and bullets. I want us to limit it that way. If there is anything, I'm saying it, if, eh, so that you don't come here and start knocking at my door, our people should get ready to defend yourself. But you don't do that on social media. That is the truth. Self-defense is our God-given right. It is a natural law. Even animals does that. But we should apply caution and wisdom. I think I've said enough so far. What you need to do is to share this message. Let every Nigerian hear this. Everyone. Eh? Everyone. <laughs> Nigerians, we are in a hot soup. If you allow this to continue. If you just... Stay there and feel that everything is all right. My dear, <laughs> before you know what is happening, there will be no land to call your homeland. Whether you are Duduwa, whether you are Arawa, whether you are Biafra. Remember, these Fulanese are sojourners. They are strangers within this geographical space. I've said enough. I'm signing out. Keep sharing, keep liking. If you are new on this platform, welcome on board. Subscribe, like, share, drop your comments. Let us you have your opinion. And on our social media platform, join us as we always bring you undiluted truth. I still remain associated with Peter as the voice of the people, the voice of God, the voice of our ancestors, saying, stay safe. Goodbye.